this is Courtney from the Ministry to Women team here at Hespler Baptist, and I have with me our very first guest on this Ministry to Women episode um, of this podcast. So uh, they have come together tonight to just share about their experience doing this Growing Together initiative that we have undertaken. So I'll let them introduce themselves and we'll get started. Hi, I'm, my name is Shona. I'm a mom to five adult children. The youngest is 20. The oldest is nearly 29. And I work full time in accounting. Hello, my name is Margaret. I'm the senior lady here. i um, been a lifelong member here pretty much at Hesper Baptist. Grew up in Hesper and uh, raised all our children and stepchildren and am enjoying my time as a great grandmother. Hi, my name is Rebecca. Um, I'm married, I work part-time, and I have two young boys. Great. Um, what's really special about tonight is just that we have women here from all different seasons of life, and each of them have um, stepped out and put themselves in a vulnerable position to join a Growing Together reading group. And so I've invited them here to just share um, about their encouraging experience thus far. So one of the questions I have for you is, what has most surprised you about this experience? I think the thing that surprised me the most was how quickly a relationship was formed. So I was put in a group with two people who I kind of knew, but didn't know very well. And how over the course of like a month or two, um, I've created this really uh, close relationship. Um, Shona's in my group. And we've just become really close. Like I know she prays for me during the week and I pray for her. And um, I know that there'll be a friendship when the book ends. And that really surprised me how quickly it happened. Wow, that's so encouraging to hear. And that's really what we've prayed for as a team, that that would be the experience that people have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was surprised by how much I enjoyed getting to know Rebecca and her whole family, because she talks about her husband and her boys and what's going on in their lives, you know, every week. And I was also surprised by how quickly the time goes by. Because we start at 7.30 and we'll just start talking. And before we know it, it's 9 o'clock and we're like, oh, we need to pray now. right? So, yeah. we, we quickly learned we needed to set a timer or we would just talk the whole time. <laughs> It'd be way too late. So your experience hasn't been awkward then? No, I don't think it has been. I mean, the first week maybe was a little, but after that, I think we just gelled and flowed. Mm -hmm. That's great. Margaret, did you want to add anything to that question? Basically what the other ladies said, and I'm surprised at how well two of the girls in my group I did not know, one fairly young and one in her 30s, and how we spent pretty much the first night just talking about each other, getting to know each other instead of diving into, like, really getting into the book. But it was very, very great how each one wants to share what they've done and they want to go forward with this this growing together. That's fantastic. Um, what fears, if any, did you guys have going into this experience? I would think that Perhaps um, one of us would not want to share our personal life or talk openly about the gospel. Some are shy, even though they do love the gospel and they want to go forward in their uh, walk with God. But um, I was just a little concerned that some might not want to share, but, but they did. They all are coming together really well. Yeah, I would say I didn't have fears, but I, I had some questions because I wondered what it would be like doing this study with a woman I might not know very well at a different stage of life. You know, are, are we going to have a lot to talk about? How is this going to work? And also doing a study over the summer. Like, how's it going to work with vacation and people going away and... You know, just the the whole logistics of, of doing doing a study at that, that time. Rebecca, any 
Yeah. My concern was like, what if we don't click? Right. And like now we're stuck in this study for weeks and we don't really get along or it's just awkward the whole time. So um, that was a concern of mine, but um, thankfully hasn't been an issue. That's great. It was really neat to see that about 40 women in our congregation reached out and said, place me in a group. And so it felt like a really big deal for us and not something to take lightly because these are people's Mm -hmm. lives and people's Mm -hmm. hearts. Um, But it's just been so encouraging to hear the positive feedback, even though you've all stepped out in vulnerability, um, but how it's been a blessing to you all. What is something you've learned from a younger sister or an older sister during this experience? Uh, We were talking about this a little bit earlier. I said from show and I learned calm. She just has this wonderful calming uh, personality and the way she talks is calming. I also think when she prays, it's very calming and um, having two young boys my days are not calm. (laughs) And so, um, it's just been something that I've learned that like, just to like not get stressed out about things and to stay calm and in the spirit. And also just, um, Shona is like talking about different courses she's taking and it's challenged me to pursue wisdom and to pursue knowledge. Um, you know, to take the time when maybe I would do something else and to use it to study God's word and to study different aspects of how we can serve others. And so that's been an encouragement to me. I had to be reminded being retired for quite a few years that the younger ladies are so much busier these days than I ever was. It's Yes, I was busy um, raising a family and working at the same time, but Life seems so much more uh, complex these days. And uh, one of the young ladies is in her later teens. She's still studying, and she's uh, wanting to travel. Um, She desires to make people know that she's on the walk with God. But uh, a lot of her friends are not Christian, and this makes it a lot harder for her. And the other ladies in her 30s, um, she's a very busy working mother, on shift work and a very stressful job. But she still tries to show her love for God, her patience, her kindness in in her work. So um, it's really nice to hear from these ladies. And the other lady in the group is pretty much my age. So we we just shared a little bit with the younger ones about our life. And so it was very, very well, very good. What I love about your answer is that you were gracious to somebody's life being different than yours. And as we continue to progress in society and in culture, um, lifestyles seem to be getting busier and busier, and I don't think it's to our benefit. But what I just heard you say is that you, you were able to set aside your past experience and realize somebody else's life looks different than mine, and I need to be gracious in that way. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I would say um, relating to that, um, Rebecca's taught me about hospitality and how that was been important in her family, and um, she loves inviting people to her home. And this is challenging for me because I work full time, and evenings and weekends are busy, so it's it's hard to, you know, set aside time for other people sometimes. So yeah, that was really. interesting to hear that from her so cool mm-hmm. um i i know we're all at different stages of the book some are further along than others but from what you've read and walked through together what has been um, a favorite chapter in the book so far and why <laughs> i always think i know the favorite chapter and then i read the next chapter <laughs> <laughs> and it just, um, it's been really amazing. Like we're only about maybe a little over halfway through the book in our group. We took a pause for vacation and stuff. Um, and I just find that like every chapter, every week, cause we do a chapter a week, um, just always seems to be really speaking to what I need in that week. Um, and so there's just been so many good things, but I think my favorite actually was chapter two. Chapter two, there was a bunch of questions to get to know each other. And I felt that when we sat down and we answered those questions, it really did help 
us get a better understanding of what we've each been through and what we've done. And then that sets a foundation, I think, for all of the other chapters that come after that. I think each chapter so far has been better. We started off slow because of one of the ladies' uh, busy work schedule, so we can't meet every week, but every two to three weeks, which is is still good because they are coming back and they're interested. And and um, I love how our group opens up and relates to the content and wisdom of each chapter. Uh, we're just finishing chapter three, but I love the questions at the end of chapter two, and like. Shona said, we started at 7. 9.30, we're still there. And we're just yakking away. And it was so nice. It was so nice. Yeah. Shona, what about you? Has been your favorite chapter? Um, yeah, I was um, last night, like, just scrolling through the book and trying to, you know, figure out which, which one did I like best. And, um, yeah, I... I like the chapter Taste and See because the older I get, the more I see the beauty and the importance and the relevance of God's word in my daily life. And I think Melissa Kruger explained that really well. You need Jesus. Fight for time with him. Believe that he is the one thing needed and trust him for everything else. And know this, he will not make you lack in the other areas in which you long. And that was such a beautiful quote for me. It's interesting that you highlighted that chapter because another lady in our congregation reached out to share with me after reading chapter three, uh, the Shane and Shane song based on Psalm 34 called Taste and See. And it's all about savoring the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you listening, um, go check out Shane and Shane's Taste and See Psalm 34 song, and be blessed by it. So as we're nearing the end, um, if you could encourage anyone who maybe hasn't started this initiative yet, um, what would be some encouragement that you would give to a sister who hasn't yet started? I think that... Um for me personally, like when it was initially presented to us, it was talked about, have you ever been in a mentoring relationship? I could look in my life to ladies who had invested in me, but never in like a formal mentorship setting. And so that can be a little intimidating, right? Like you kind of have this concept of like, oh, it's like me and this other person. And if I'm the mentor, I'm totally responsible for them. And I really love the analogy she gave in the book of how, um, it's a weaker tree being tethered to a stronger tree during that season of life and how we all go through that season where we're the weaker tree. And we also go through seasons where we're the stronger tree and it's not our job to cause the weaker tree to grow, but it's just to give them stability. And that was really encouraging to me because I was like, okay, this isn't as scary as I thought initially it would be. I can't force somebody to want to grow, but if they want to walk in this, I can walk with them and just be someone consistent in their life. And so that kind of took the scariness out of it. And so we're all busy as Mark was talking, we all have different lives. Um, make time just like we make time for God, make time for this because honestly through this, I like, I personally have been kind of yearning for a long time for deeper friendships in the church past the good mornings and some of that stuff. And I have found that deeper friendship with Shona through this. And it's just encouraging to me to think that if we've got 40 ladies who are creating these deeper relationships, and then we go out from this and feel more comfortable to form deeper relationships with others, we're going to just connect the body of Christ together. And unity is one of the things that, you know, God desires for us. And so um, it may be scary, step out, and uh, you'll be glad you did. <laughs> I love that answer. Yeah, I would, I would say we need one another, and we all need Jesus. And um, you can encourage and support another woman by listening to her, sharing wisdom, and praying with her. And you don't have to have the answers for the things that she struggles with. 
you know, you can say, hey, let's go to God together and talk to God about this and God will help you. And um, what's been encouraging for me really is um, seeing God work in both Rebecca and me as, you know, as we pray for one another and talk to one another and that gives both of us encouragement and hope. If I knew someone that was interested in coming out, <clears throat> I would really encourage her to come see for herself. Um, a lot of them are starting out the spiritual trip for the first time, but we're all there together. Some of us have been on that road for a long time, might have a little bit more knowledge and and references we can pass down to the younger ones. So you're not alone, and you don't have to be hesitant. We're all longing for the same outcome, to glorify our God more. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you guys would want to share that you haven't already um, that's been meaningful to you? Each lady in our group, um, in one of the questions, I think it was chapter two, shared their favorite scripture. And the one lady shared Psalm 23, said that that had helped her so much uh, with her, her journey toward God. But sometimes she still feels like that lost sheep because of the environment and friends she's around who are not Christian. So it becomes a real challenge for her. And the other lady right away opened up and said, I have an excellent video that I'm going to send to all of you here. It's on YouTube, and it relates to Psalm 23, and it's called Jesus, the Soul Shepherd. It's only 30 minutes long, and it's by Jack Kramer. You can get it on YouTube. It's a very simplified love between that shepherd and his sheep, and that can be passed down from our God to us. I'd also encourage anybody who may say, I like I, I would love to do this and I don't have time to meet formally with other women to still get a copy of the book and read it because it is so beneficial and just a lot of what she talks about is, is the essential basic things that like we know we need to do in our Christian walk, but in the busyness of life sometimes gets difficult in the way. So I think the book is an excellent tool, whether you can get together with other ladies or not. But I just really want to thank our Ministry to Women team for facilitating this and setting this up because um, I think it's provided relationships and growth that wouldn't have happened otherwise. So thank you. Well, thank you for the encouragement. Um, yeah, just as I've gotten to interact with other women at other churches and hear about what they're doing in their women's ministry, um, it's pretty clear that this is a pretty unique experience that we are embarking on. And, and you know, ever since Pastor Kevin arrived and just seeing his influence on, on the body as a whole, developing deeper relationships, we were delighted to be able to, to step into that um, and try to foster that amongst our women. So I'm just so grateful that for everyone who has... Um, taken that step of vulnerability and put themselves out there. And we know that the book is not a uh, earth shattering book, but like um, Rebecca said, it just makes you think at a heart level for your own life. And we should all be thinking through those questions. So they might just look like simplistic questions, but when you actually engage with them at a heart level, I think the Holy Spirit can, can do some work in each of us. Shona, anything you wanted to share uh, before we end? Any special highlights that you haven't gotten to share thus far? No, I really um, appreciated how much she used scripture in, in the book just to ground everything. I really liked um, how much scripture she used in, in each chapter to you know bring us back to God's word and focus on God. So... I think that's definitely been a uh, focus in our conversations and in our prayer. So, you know, we're not just getting to know one another. We're interacting with God's word and, and with God as we pray for one another. So I think that's an important part of the um, relationship building as well. 
Yeah, because we're all giving each other counsel. It's just what counsel are we giving? And are we giving the living and active word to Mm -hmm. each other? Or are we just giving our own thoughts and opinions? Um, So I'll, I'll just share one highlight that I love that Melissa emphasizes is the fact that we're all just disciples making disciples. And like what Margaret alluded to, some of us are further along in the journey, but you're still a disciple too, even though you're this many decades into your walk and you are you are calling back to those coming behind as we saw in the book the beautiful poem that she gave us um so i just wanted to thank each of you for sharing your experience and i hope that you continue to not only enjoy each other but that you get to continue to see how this is blessing the body here at hbc so thanks for coming out Thank you. Thank you.